everyone, this is Brittany from Teach Me ABA, and I'm very excited, as I always am, to continue on our Task List 5 series that we have going on for all of you that are studying for the big exam. From someone who knows, it can be very, very, very stressful, and I do hope that all of our videos have helped you. I know that I've even gotten some shout outs in social media saying that it has. So you are being heard, and you are very welcome, and we also appreciate all of your comments. So thank you so much. We're going to continue with F. One, which is a review of records and available data, and um, you're gonna use this data for your behavioral assessment. So, here we go. So, specifically, when you are a behavior analyst, you're a clinician, and you're going to start on a case, uh, we've already discussed this, but you should be going through and looking at prior records or any available data for that specific client that you have. Um, records available or data available are really important because that information is vital to getting the most that you can out of creating a personalized program for that individual, right? Because again, behavior analysts, we never copy and paste. Everything has to be tailored uniquely to that specific person. Otherwise, we're just not doing our job correctly. Uh, what do I mean by available data? Well, I mean uh, educational history. So by this, uh, a good example of this would be a IEP uh, because this just shows us exactly what the client is having as far as a program at school and then maybe we can just help or maybe that's something that we're already working on. So that's perfect. Then we have more availability for us to keep moving forward with what we already think is a good fit for this person. Uh, medical history, so any kind of documents that are available to us, because again, we always have to consider any biological factor, uh, any physiological factor that may be going on before we make any changes or we roll out something else that's completely new. A good example of this might be if you have a client that has epilepsy, if they've been diagnosed with that, uh, then it would be necessary for the behavior analyst to include uh, any sort of precautions. Uh, maybe you have a plan of action for what's gonna happen if there is a uh, attack during session. You know, it's good to have that crisis plan for that individual, so that way you can just keep the individual safe and you know that your ABA treatment is going to be effective for that person. It's also gonna be necessary for you to have any previous documentation from a previous ABA company. Now, while I know it might sound that maybe we're comparing and having a big ego and saying, oh, you know, my program is gonna work even better, that's not the case. What we wanna do is just we wanna assess whether or not previous programming was effective for that individual. And again, it has nothing to do on the part of the old ABA company. You know, maybe they just didn't have uh, another set of eyes to help them and maybe expand on that programming. So we can decide whether or not we're going to keep a previous program, we're going to alter or tailor a program, um, or we might even not choose to have that program. But at least it gives us an idea as far as where we should go from here. Because again, we always want to be um, as effective as we can for our client and we want to move forward the best way that we think is possible for them. Now, what do I mean by using the previous programming and then altering it a little bit? Let's say, for example, that a previous ABA company was using five stimuli to teach tacting objects or items. Um, and while that's the decision of the previous company, typically for us at Piles, we like to limit it to only three stimuli. So again, this helps us because we've already altered our programming to what we feel is the best fit for that particular client. Now, um, I know I've given you a lot of information and I do hope that this is something that you can move forward with and it will help you in your programming and especially if you're studying for that exam, it gives you some examples and some ideas of what exactly F-1 pertains to. So as always, please like, subscribe, share. We look forward to all your comments and good luck studying.